Hello again and welcome to my second clip about photography and I hope you saw the first clip where I tried to explain how light works but in this one I will explain you what exposure is and how why is exposure so important in photography and uh, why understanding correct correct exposure is important if you want to get into photography so let's take a look at some things that will give us the basics of understanding exposure first thing that we will look at is focal length what is focal length well focal length according to your physics professor or teacher is the distance between the center of a concave mirror and the focal point of the lens or mirror which means exactly nothing to me now maybe that's the real definition but it doesn't help real people so I will try to put it in perspective and uh, I'll try to explain you what focal length on a lens means for us for the photographer and the easiest way to explain you that is I will show you an example of how you can understand that but basically the focal length will will give you the magnification power of the lens that you that you hold in your hand so in this case let's say it's 35 millimeters uh, this is a zoom so let's not deal with zooms right now but this is uh, 50 millimeters I have uh, 180 millimeters but what does that mean well let's say if you make a little hole in a piece of paper like this if you try to look through that piece of paper and you put it very close to your eyes like this you see it maybe 17 millimeters because you are able to see a lot you are able to see very wide and you are able to see a lot of things that are in front of you well now if you start to pull out that piece of paper away your your magnification power increases or your focal length length increases which means you are able to see less and less and less but that gives you that zoom range that gives you that magnification or that gives you that if you're able to see the whole thing at 35 at 50 you're able to see just a part of your subject at 200 you're able to see just this part of your subject at 400 millimeters let's say you're able to see only his head and so on and so forth so uh, make a little piece and try to move it in and away from your eyes and you'll see how things start to disappear and this is what focal length is it gives you uh, an idea of how far away you can see and but by how far away I mean this far away will be your full frame it will fill your frame that little piece of the plane that you are able to see with your eyes will fill your full frame your full your complete picture so let's take a look now at the real uh, explanation about the exposure and why there will always be exposure in our pictures well exposure is based on two components one is aperture and I'll explain those separately one is aperture and one is shutter speed those are two terms that you will hear very often from photographers and they might not even say uh, the actual word aperture but by the numbers that they say another photographer will know well that's aperture once you realize those two you will know a lot more and you will understand photographers a lot better well <clears throat> let's take a look at aperture first the aperture is the hole that your light has to pass through in order to be recorded on your uh, digital camera sensor so it does the easiest explanation but this is pretty much what it is now why is there different different apertures or why there is different numbers for apertures and why are the numbers so complicated again it's a very easy explanation about that aperture goes in the, in this order now you might think why is it not one two three four and that's it 
because aperture is a ratio between the focal length and the size of the iris or how much the iris of the lens is open. Now, this thing that you see me open and close right now are some little tiny blades that move in and out when I press this part of the lens and this is called the iris. So, let's say, what is f1? And they're called f-stops, the aperture sizes or the iris sizes are also called f1 or f2 or f2.8, f4 and so forth. Since it's a ratio, basically, let's say at f1 or aperture is f1, the ratio between the focal length or how uh, far away I see with that lens is the same exact as how wide my iris is open and that's in millimeters. In order to have on that lens that I'm holding in my hand, f1, I will have to have a iris, its widest open point will be 50 millimeters and its focal length will be 50 millimeters and that gives me f1. I hope this is somewhat easy. So now let's take a look at the second part of the, of the exposure equation, which is shutter speed. And shutter speed is somehow easier to understand than aperture. But basically it's the amount of time that your sensor of your digital camera records the light that comes through the lens. That's all that there is to shutter speed. Now, those two interacting with each other will give you different results. Because basically, we can take the same exact picture, let's say at f4, or aperture is open at f4, and the shutter speed is 1 125th of a second. Or we can record the same exact amount of light, but we close our lens down, well, the numbers go up, but actually the, the hole of the lens or the, the hole of which the light has to pass through goes smaller, even though the numbers go higher. So, if, we, if, if the first exposition is f4 at 125th of a second, at f8 we need longer time, so we need 1 60th of a second, let's say. So it gives us pretty much the same exposure or we record the same amount of light. But the results are different. And here is where it gets a little trickier. Because now we need to uh, introduce another, another part of the exposure equa equation and that is depth of field. Depth of field changes. And depth of field is how many things in our subject we have in focus. So basically if we, if we make a picture of our subject like this, our camera focuses automatically, we use auto, auto focus, and here, here is our picture. It's uh, our model here at the two different settings. I will put something in the background and you'll see how depth of field works. So the wider, you see the wider our aperture is open, the less sharp our things in the background are and as well in the foreground. They kind of disappear, they get blurred because our aperture is wide and our camera needs less time in order to record the light that comes through it. Now if I close completely, my lens at, I don't know, f22, or this is a very, very tiny hole that our light has to pass through, then the depth of field will uh, increase dramatically. It will, I will have things that are uh, 3, 4, 5, 10, 15 feet or uh, 7, 8 meters behind my subject that are still very sharp, they are very visible. I hope you understand what I'm trying to explain because I'm trying to explain it as simple as possible. But go ahead and grab your camera and get away from the auto mode where the camera decides for you how, how fast 
your shutter speed will be and how uh, how wide your aperture will be will be open try to do it yourself and change between different settings so you see how it works for yourself and maybe you have to go back to my clips and get the feeling of it or understand something that I didn't explain but go ahead and look for yourself in the internet because those are very uh, basic and very important parts of photography and until you don't understand those two things uh, shutter speed and aperture you are as good of a photographer as your camera decides that you are so have fun grab the cameras and go take pictures